Hello, everyone. Welcome to Global Express. I'm Nina Gopal. This is the new Indian Express's weekly interaction with experts where we analyze the impact of developments in our backyard, on our neighborhood, on India. Do click on the new Indian Express website and tweet and follow Global Express. So today we're looking at what is definitely turning into one of Prime Minister Narendra Modi's biggest diplomatic challenges in recent times. What must India do now? We have eight former Indian naval officers, two ex-Navy captains, five commanders, and one sentence, one sailor, all sentenced to death last week for espionage by a court in Doha in, in the Gulf country of Qatar. The case has sent shockwaves across the country. They've been under arrest since they were detained in August uh, 2022, which is uh, 15 months ago. And the verdict was pronounced not in a country that India has a confrontational relationship with, as it does with Pakistan, where Kulbushan Yadav, another former naval officer, uh, faces the death end sentence for espionage. This is with Qatar, a Gulf nation where over 700,000 Indians work and live as law-abiding citizens. A Gulf nation that is India's biggest supplier of natural gas. We've built five gas terminals to import LNG and LPG from Qatar through the Indian government company Petronet LPG. Our bilateral trade stands at about $15 billion. Our guest is Manish Tiwari. He's a member of parliament who represents uh, Anandpur Sahib in, in uh, Punjab. Uh, he, th that's where some of the jail sailors come from. He was a minister in Man Manmohan Singh's uh, government. More importantly, he's a legal eagle. He's a lawyer. He has repeatedly taken up the issue of the naval officers, saying the onus is on our government to get their sentences commuted, to bring them home. Mr. Tiwari raised the uh, matter in Parliament on December 7th last year, to which the External Affairs Minister Jay Shankar has responded with a letter on December 23rd. Before we ex explore the key question on whether we have have or haven't done enough uh, for these uh, for these eight men, let me name them. There's Captain Navtej Singhil, Captain Saurabh Vashisht, Commander Purnendu Tiwari, Captain Birendra Kumar Varma, Commander Sugunakar Pakala, Commander Sanjeev Gupta, Commander Amit Nagpal, and Sailor Ragesh. Our deepest sympathies, we stand with you. Uh, Manish, if I can bring you in, uh, you know, would you like to uh, come in on the fact that, uh, uh, that you know the families, they've reached out to you, uh, you know, did you do you feel that we have failed to step in and provide uh, the kind of legal counsel that we should have while the investigation must have been ongoing? And I believe our national security advisor is also supposed to have visited Doha. Uh, you know, so tell me what 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 your thoughts are on the subject. Well, Lena, I find it uh, completely and absolutely mystifying. And the reason why I say that is because irrespective of how different uh, legal and judicial systems may be in different countries, but there mm. are certain canons of natural jurisprudence which are intrinsic and embedded in any uh, legal or judicial system in order to ensure uh, impartiality and in order to ensure objectivity insofar as the process is concerned. Now, if you were to rewind back, somewhere in the month of July or August, uh, these people were picked up in a midnight swoop. Mm. The information that surfaced was when one of the relatives of one of the officers who ostensibly had been detained yeah. uh, actually reached out publicly seeking help. And uh, slowly and gradually, it came to the fore that these uh, eight officers, some of them extremely decorated officers, were being held in solitary confinement. And these are That's not right. people. These are people who are retired, who are possibly in their mid-60s or late-60s, and therefore, obviously, would have all the attendant health issues, which come with an... Uh, uh, an, an advanced age, if I can put it in those words. Yeah. And therefore, at that particular point in time also, it was very unclear 
as to why they had been detained. There were mm. some public reports with regard to, you know, certain things which they allegedly uh, may have done or may not have done. But there was nothing substantive in terms of the charges. Which what does the families tell you? What well, were the said, ones that have spoken to you? What have they told you? Well, essentially what they said was that they were not aware as to why they had been detained. Mm. And even when I raised this matter in Parliament, uh, I think in the other house, uh, Dr. Jay Shankar made a statement to the effect, which I think is available uh, if you were to Google it, saying that the matter is extremely sensitive. That's now, right. obviously, uh, by the December of 2022, government was at least aware of the intrinsic sensitivity, quote unquote, sensitivity in the matter. And from December, we fast forward to October, and then you have this death sentence. Yeah. So it and and even today, even as we speak, the yeah. judgment is not in the public domain. And mm. going by whatever reports are available, it uh, suggests that there were apparently a record three hearings. And eight there were people, there were eight, three. That's what uh, that, that's 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 the 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 the. Uh, information which is in the public domain subject to correction and eight people have been sentenced to death. Now, you know, there is an intrinsic injustice in the manner in which this entire process has unfolded. Yeah. Presume for a moment, hypothetically speaking, that, you know, the Qatari government had certain concerns with regard to their national security allegedly have been breached. But mm -hmm. the rules of national, uh, natural justice uh, ordain that at least the family members should have been informed what the charges were against them. And then uh, once the court arrived at a certain conclusion, uh, irrespective of the fact that it's a completely erroneous conclusion, because even if you go by uh, Katri law, at least that is what I have been informed. A death sentence is only handed out where there is material harm to somebody's person which ends up getting committed. Oh. So therefore, it, it, it all does not really square up from a purely legal and jurisprudential uh, uh, standpoint. And what See, on that, the, on that, I just like to say it also was was uh, pronounced that this this judgment was pronounced by a lower court, the lowest court of all. Well, you see, the fact is that irrespective of whichever court uh, pronounced the judgment, the moot question is whether they were given a fair trial or not, and that does not seem to be clearly the case by whatever reports are available in the public space. And even today, you do not have a copy of the judgment. What your yeah. colleagues inform me who've actually gone on to the website of the court of first instance, there are various judgments, some of them in English, but this judgment is not there. Yeah, so the court of first instance normally, normally produces a judgment in Arabic. Yeah, but apparently there are some judgments there in English also. That's what I was told. But mm -hmm. even if the judgment was in Arabic, had it been uploaded, it would have been translated. And the facts would have been before all of us and before the country as to what are the charges against them. So as of today, we do not know as to why they were detained, what they were charged with, you know, why they have been sentenced to death which in any jurisprudence happens in the rarest of rare cases. I can understand that obviously they do not want to uh, make everything that they do public. But as I understand, even after the death sentence, subject to correction, I don't even think that the Katri ambassador was called in and uh, a protest note or some kind of a protest formally by the government of India except the statement which the MEA spokesperson put out, has yeah. really been done. So, yeah. so, so, so the whole thing doesn't add up and my heart goes out to all those eight men who are now facing a death sentence and, and their, their families. families who would be dying a thousand deaths every moment.
that's true that's true okay if i can just get back to you uh, mr tiwari you know the charges have not been made public that is true it's not been uh, it's not in the public domain but uh, the families have all said to us i mean the family members that i have spoken to have said to me uh, that uh, the charges are supposedly of espionage now the and and spying for israel you know uh, these eight men were in charge they also uh, used the uh, they also worked for a company called uh, you know um, uh, what, what was it which which basically it was a was a company which was headed by an omani naval officer dahra global technologies uh, it was headed by a naval officer from oman and a qatari major general uh so they were both former military officers and they were uh, in talks or in consultation with a italian company and then later on uh, you know a couple of other shipbuilding italian companies and basically it was to help the qatari navy set up a, a proper submarine uh, you know facility and the original plan was to have two uh, small submarines now the charge that has been that that has been made public by uh, the financial times which is a very reputable newspaper is that dara global was a front for the cia and mossad that both the omani chief and its qatari head worked for the deep state uh, i mean other newspapers have said this not not the uh, financial times uh, but other newspapers have said this and that they were they wanted to keep an eye on doha's acquisition to give teeth to its navy uh, and that was basically what was the problem because the being naval officers they must have been social animals they must have opened up about it at you know at various uh, you know i don't know whether at you know em embassy functions or so on this must have all been you know stuff fuel which 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 brought about the suspicion that these men were uh, were spying uh has the, have the families uh, uh, shared this with you mr tabari their uh, their fears their deep fears look nina i am a lawyer and uh, in a matter as sensitive as this especially as when I, i don't know as sensitive as uh eight people being sentenced to death i refuse to react to any speculation Mm. till the time i do not see the papers for myself and therefore when i talked about opacity in uh, uh, in judicial systems and the underlying principles of natural justice which run across uh, all legal systems irrespective of whatever legal traditions or well springs they come from the first and foremost thing which you do is that you at least inform the next of kin yeah as to what they have been charged with right yeah. in india also if somebody is charged under the official secrets act yeah right when a charge sheet is filed in a court of law that charge sheet is not a private document and ultimately a charge sheet is nothing more uh then facts and circumstances as best understood by an investigating officer mm -hmm. it has no more legal sanctity than that so therefore under these circumstances you do not have a memo of arrest which has been given to the next of kin at least it is not in the public domain you do not have uh, a charge sheet which lays out what are the charges against them ultimately as ambassador fabian said that even if seven hearings took place uh, are seven hearings adequate enough uh, for eight people to present their best defense before they are given the sentence of death even in countries which have extremely rigid legal systems the death penalty is something you are very very careful and circumspect about when you are sitting in a judicial capacity so therefore it all does not add up and for me to react to speculation 
as to what the charges could be based upon something which may have appeared in a certain newspaper, howsoever credible or uncredible it might be, I don't think is the appropriate thing to do. And that is why I have been repeatedly saying that, look, now you have a death sentence. Put the judgment out in the public space. Let, let people know as to what exactly did they do which invited a penalty, which is the harshest penalty which can be given to a human being. What are the families telling you? Because I've also been told, uh, Manish, that some of them, have were, the ones who were in solitary, apparently have lost a lot of weight. And now at least that solitary <clears throat> confinement has been lifted. So they're sharing rooms, two, of, two to a room. But some of them are in very poor health. Have, have, they, have families <clears throat> conveyed that to you? Well, essentially, uh, when they had come and met me uh, initially, when this whole thing started off, that was their principal concern. That mm -hmm. there are elderly people, they have health issues, you know, they require regular medication and solitary confinement at any age and extended solitary confinement can play havoc with your mind. And yeah, so therefore, they've also, but haven't they also well, told you that they've been and given? And therefore, therefore, you can get anybody to sign any piece of paper which is self incriminating. You know, essentially, oh, that's an interesting to, point. Essentially, yeah. to uh, you know, essentially to get out of that uh, predicament at that moment. And if the charges were indeed so grave, how is it that the Omani National, who was ostensibly the chair of that company, was released on bail yeah. and allowed to go back to Oman? Yeah. I think the other Katri gentleman that you mentioned, which at least yes. I was not aware of, I thought there was only one owner, uh, he's also been released on bail. Yeah, so, he's a major general. So, so, so therefore, you know, you have already split the culpability, whereby mm -hmm. those who were charged with the responsibility of that, of managing that particular company at the apex level have been allowed to go off. And these eight gentlemen, ranging from a sailor to former captains of the Indian Navy, decorated officers who obviously knew the rules of the game since they wore an Indian naval uniform for over uh, three decades of their lives, would not have been cavalier uh, about as, sharing information. Yeah, as the suggestion being put out in the in, in the public domain. And that's why right from day one, I have been saying it does not add up. It seems... But Manish, they do. They say seems, that there's... But they it, say they have electronic evidence, which means it must be a uh, tap telephone calls, uh, you know, transcripts of uh, what they said. The thing is, you can't do a criminal trial, uh, Nina, with leaks, peeps and squeaks. Okay, that's a good one. A, yeah, yeah, yeah you're, you're dealing with the lives of eight uh, human beings. You know, yeah, you yeah. can't uh, put out source-based information and say that we have this evidence, we have that evidence, they are accused of this, they are accused of that. It has to be a formal charge, little law that I understand. I think there are certain basic steps which are common to every legal and judicial system. I just want to give, give you one last one last chance to tell you what you're going to do. What is it that you personally are going to do on behalf of these uh, naval veterans? Nothing, just keep raising the issue. Just try and see that uh, this uh, concern remains uh, square and center in both uh, official and public consciousness so that we are able to get our people back home. See, mm -hmm. this is not a he said, she said, and this is not the time when you want to score brownie points when the lives of eight of your uh, very senior naval officers are at stake. But yes, I think their cause will be served by continuing to raise the issue and keeping it up and center and square in both public consciousness and the official consciousness. Uh, thank you, Mr. Tiwari, again. Thank you, viewers, for watching. Please do click on the Global Express icon on the New Indian Express website and keep watching Global Express. Thank you.